Hey everybody, I'm Dr. Richard Stevenson and I'm the director of Stevenson Dental Solutions in San Dimas, California. We're a teaching center dedicated to excellence in overall knowledge enhancement and skills improvement as well. Today we're going to tackle the PFM preparation on the mandibular canine. This is a pretty tricky preparation unless you follow this really simple technique that I'm going to show you. One of the reasons why I think this prep is hard is because we really don't have adjacent teeth to mimic the tooth has contours that are quite unique. Notice on the facial how it has this very long contour on the occlusal two-thirds and this more upright contour on the gingival third. It's not shaped like any other tooth and we have to basically use the tooth itself as a guide. So what I've done here is I've just marked approximately where the opposing teeth overlap, but remember we're going to have to reduce two millimeters off the incisal edge to provide adequate space for ceramics to create a more natural look. The RGS2 can be used to measure two millimeters. When we look at the lingual, we see that on the acadental typodont, it looks a little bit like a maxillary canine. It has a ridge and it has these two fossa. We're not going to replicate the fossa, but we are going to replicate the ridge with one slope going mesially and one going distal, maintaining that ridge down the middle, and try to provide approximately 1.5 to 2 millimeter tall axial wall on the lingual. One of the most important parts of a PFM is to know where the shoulder stops and where the chamfer begins. And when you have a tooth that's in the interior like this, the location of the shoulder is really critical and it needs to go interproximal. So we're going to look at these interproximal locations as being the termination of the shoulder. You can even make a little mark, remind yourself that when I make the shoulder on this preparation, it's got to go all the way from one side to the other where the lingual is going to be chamfer. And then we'll have transitional areas between. So let's get started on the incisal reduction. And let's utilize an 847KR016 burr and I use this because this diamond has the dimensions that we want on the facial reduction and also allows us to reduce the incisal really easily. So let's start with maybe a one millimeter depth cut. Uh, this could be done much deeper right away, but the tip of the burr is 1.1 millimeters, so you can get kind of an idea how deep you're going here. And you could reduce that in entire mesial incline if you wanted to, but I'm stopping right here with an RGS3 diameter to show you that that is in fact one millimeter. We're going to go ahead and continue to almost the entire two millimeters. We'll leave a little bit at the end for smoothing so that we end up with uh, a preparation that's not over reduced. Sometimes if you reduce the entire amount from the very beginning you may end up over reducing by the time you're done smoothing. So a little bit under reduction is, is probably a good idea. Just the RGS2 here showing you the reduction that we made so far. The burr is angled towards the facial gingival just a little bit. This will facilitate clearance with the opposing lingual surface. When you go to reduce the facial, follow the contours of the tooth. We're going to get our retention from the gingival third of this preparation facial lingually. We cannot make the incisal two thirds straight up and down. We've got to follow the contours so that the final result is aesthetic. So we have to reduce about 1.5 millimeters at the upper portion and 1 to 1.2 millimeters down at the shoulder. And the burr is really nicely uh, shaped for this purpose because those are the dimensions that we want. The burr dimensions are exactly what we want. We just have to tip the burr. You can see I can verify the depth here, 1.5 and then down to the gingival, 1 millimeter. It's less than 1.5 here. Perhaps we can use an RGS3 and measure that 1 millimeter that we're looking for. You don't want to be less than 1 millimeter, otherwise the ceramics cannot be made aesthetic. 
And here's an RGS4 showing you that we're in fact 1.5 millimeters deep axially at the incisal portion. So there's this gradual increase in the amount that you reduce as you go up towards the incisal. So let's just continue to reduce the mesial half following the contours that we've established already right down the middle. Follow the gingival scallop. You always want to keep the burr uniformly super gingival. You can use the tip of the burr to gauge the depth of the shoulder. We want the shoulder to be perpendicular to the root or the unprepared tooth structure, which is going to mean that the internal angle will be uh, slightly obtuse. A nice thin burr can be used to break through the interproximal contact, but on the distal, I'm going to use a wide burr. So with practice, you can go wider and wider. I'm just showing you that maybe. Uh, novice operators or beginners that uh, you can leave a little shell behind as a protection. If you are nicking the adjacent tooth when you go interproximal, it's just simply a matter of moving the burr a little bit further away from the adjacent tooth and also always uh, leaving a shell. Shells are very thin, less than 0.4 millimeters. So take some patience, but you go and continue until finally, yes. It's a good moment. No adjacent tooth damage and we've broken contact. So I have actually switched diamonds here to an 856, which is very similar. And I'm just gonna work my way down from the incisal down to the gingival. Uh, I could have kept using that 847, but uh, my 847 was Pretty worn out so I picked up another bird it happened to be an 856 and it's kind of nice to be able to show you a couple different ways of doing it I'm gonna leave a tenon here in this case uh, this is the T prep technique I, I think it works really well for teeth that have strange anatomy or not not typical like a central because um, you can really use this as a guide and take your measurements from the unprepared area and so we're just duplicating our efforts on the other side of the uh, preparation. And on this side, I'm going to go ahead and break contact with the larger burr. And like I said, this is something that as you get more experience, you'll be able to do with ease. You know, when uh, private practitioners watch these videos, sometimes they'll complain that I'm inefficient with all these multiple burrs and I think I just need to remind them, hey, you were a student once too, you know, <laughs> it's not that easy. So you get good at this later. Just be patient. It's like learning any new skill. It just takes some time. And I'm putting a little mark here so you can see the, uh, the difference between the incisal part and the gingival part of the facial, how much we're reducing. It's relatively different. See so you're 1.5 up here, but down to the gingival, uh, we have to turn the instrument around to the RGS-3 and see that it's only one millimeter. So at this point, let's go ahead and remove the tenon. This is sometimes the aggravating part of it, but I think it's worthwhile. Don't recreate the form. Uh, remember, the purpose of the tenon was to provide you with the form you need to follow. So uh, make sure you blend the reduction of that tenon into the established form that you have. Trust yourself because you took the time to do this and you should know that it's correct. It's always good to close the type on together and take a look and see how we're doing on the reduction. We'd like to have 
the tip of this canine right between the lateral and the canine above. And so it's kind of nice to come in here and just finesse that location. If you're taking an exam and you accomplish this, I think that your graders will be uh, very happy with the fact that you were able to do that. Okay, with this incisal part just about finished, let's turn our attention now to the lingual. And for this, we're going to use the 877-009. And the burr is uh, going to create a true chamfer, not a uh, something that's more like a shoulder, which is oftentimes what's being done these days. But this is a, a declination angle that is about 60 degrees, and it's going to have a depth of 0 0.5 to 0 0.7. Once you're finished with this chamfer, let's move on to the lingual inclines and a football shaped diamond, a 379.014. If you use half the diameter of the burr, that's 0.7. That will give you uh, a really good amount of reduction here for the metal that will be in this area. If you need porcelain here, you want to reduce just a little bit more, maybe go up to a millimeter. This area is not in function. Uh, it doesn't need to have a significant amount of reduction, but we do need room for the ceramic, the metal, and the opaque layer that lies in between. I like to try to maintain the morphology. This tooth did have, you know, inclines, so let's keep it. Refine with fine diamonds. If you want to go to slow speed or turn your electric handpiece down to about 5,000 RPM or even 2,000 RPM, I've even gone as little as 500 RPM, the burr tip is perpendicular to the unprepared surface. So when you do this, you may have to tip the burr, but remember, you're gonna create undercuts, so always remove the undercuts after you do this uh, shoulder enhancement. Try to keep that shoulder uniformly above the uh, tissue. Obviously, clinically, it'll be determined by caries, aesthetic demand, retention, biological uh, limitations, etc. But uh, for type on preps, we keep these margins super gingival. That way we get to see how nice your margins are when we grade you. So don't hide them. You can see how interesting that facial is. It looks wrong, but actually it is quite correct because it follows the original contours. So this we're fine with an 8877 on the lingual. Uh, the chamfer was pretty smooth. We can make it just a little bit sh smoother and transition that to a beveled shoulder just at that midway point and then stop because beyond there you have a shoulder. You can measure the supergingival area and see that it's about maybe half a millimeter above the tissue. And the axial wall is 1.5. These little sharp little corners here need to be rounded off and I like to blend these with the same burr I was just using, the 8877, and make everything look continuous and smooth. And so once again the handpiece is uh, operating uh, a little bit more slowly. Perhaps on electric you're in the 5000 range, uh, probably not much, not much more than 10,000. And you're rounding off sharp edges. making the planes nice and smooth and even, trying to remove the deep scratches from the previous diamond burrs. And I think the prep is just about completed here. So let's take a look at it from the facial view. And now we can also look at it from the side view and the lingual. And it turned out okay. It's a tricky little prep, but one that works quite well when you use the technique that I've described. So I want to thank you for your time and attention. Appreciate all your feedback. Uh, I've got a lot of videos to make, so be patient. I want to make everybody happy, and they're a lot of fun to do. So. Have a great day, everybody. Take care.